Now this review will contain spoilers, so if you have not watched the movie and you are not looking for a review with spoilers, I would suggest leaving this video now. Feel free to put a thumbs up on it anyway, but <laughs> leave the video now and go watch somebody else's review that is reviewing the movie without containing spoilers. <laughs> Welcome back Team Fever, back again with another video and in today's video I'm going to be doing a movie review for the Netflix original movie Bird Box that I just seen last night. Now I've been hearing a lot about this movie so that's the reason why I watched it. I had no intentions on reviewing it but the movie was so good and I'm not really a movie watcher. Once I saw like the time span of this movie, it's over two hours long. I didn't think that I was going to be like it was going to keep my attention span for as long as it did. But 15 minutes into this movie and I was hooked. So I just had to come on screen and give a review of this movie. It's definitely worth getting your Netflix subscription just to watch it. Very surprised that this movie was not in theaters because I'm not a movie watcher. It has to be a very, very talked about movie for me to go watch it. Like Get Out. I think like that was the last movie that I really seen. I have like... 10 pages of notes on this movie. So I'm not sure how long this review is gonna be. So get your popcorn, get your snacks because we might be in for a long run. I'm just letting y'all know. So the movie starts off with this woman. We found out that her name is Mallory and she's painting inside her studio apartment. Or it's probably not a studio apartment actually. It's just an apartment and she's basically the main character and she's played by Sandra Bullock. She's, she's like a, a loner character. Like she doesn't really go out much. She doesn't really like see the world she doesn't talk to her mom and we learn this from her sister who's jessica jessica comes and gives her groceries and she's basically complaining to mallory saying like you don't get out you don't see the world you don't you know talk to anybody i always have to update mom on you and by the way mallory is pregnant so the main character is sandra bullock she's pregnant and she's a loner keep that in mind jessica is her sister she's more energetic more friendly more She's living life more. She's not even really like outgoing, so to speak. She's just living life. On TV, we see that there's like an alert for some mass suicides that's going on overseas and other countries, mainly Russia, um, where for some reason, some odd unknown reason, like people are just committing suicide, like a mass amount of people. And we see them like running all around and stuff like that. So Jessica, the reason why she came over was to take Mallory to the hospital for some type of checkup because she's pregnant. Inside the hospital we can see that Mallory is she's such a loner that she doesn't really even want a baby so much so that the nurse even like hints at her giving up her baby for, considering adoption even going as far as to give her a brochure and Mallory definitely considers it. On their way out the hospital Jessica goes to the car first so she's already inside the car. Mallory on her way out sees this woman committing suicide hitting her head against glass basically killing herself. Mallory goes outside goes to the car and she tells her sister like go run like whatever it is that was in Russia it's here. So Jessica takes off and basically they're seeing other people inside the street start to run around frantically. Some are committing suicide some are trying to prevent themselves from looking at it whatever it is at this moment and this is when I learned that there's something inside the sky that I'm thinking in my head I'm not saying this is actually what happened but there's something in the sky that people are looking at that's making them get into this daze and just decide to kill themselves as they're driving <laughs> Jessica just says that she's gonna take Mallory to her house like we're not I'm not dropping you back off home you're coming with me Mallory's like, no, I won't have clothes, I don't have nothing, and Jessica's like, you worried about clothes at a time like this? And Mallory's like, um, okay, just go, 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 just drive. And Jessica stops at a red light, <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck, do you see what's going on outside? And she's like, just go, like, Mallory's like, just go, and Jessica's like, I'm not running this red light with a pregnant woman in the car. Mallory's like, there's nobody around, just go. Jessica decides to finally go, in the middle of them driving, Jessica phone rings and for some reason Mallory decides to reach back to get the phone. Jessica sees something in the sky. Mallory since she was leaning back to get the phone doesn't. So then Jessica starts driving crazy to try to commit suicide. Eventually like Mallory tries to stop her but Jessica hits something and somehow or another the car flips over. But they both get out. So at, at this point they both could be alive but instead Jessica decides to stand in front of a garbage truck and basically commit suicide and let the garbage truck hit her and in that moment I jumped because like we just saw a woman get hit by a garbage truck. Mallory just watched her sister 
commit suicide. So at this point, she starts running, going crazy. She didn't fail multiple times while she's pregnant. It was kind of scary to watch and harsh to watch this pregnant woman keep falling on her stomach. People are kind of trying to help her because at some point she was in a daze, like, because her sister just died in front of her eyes. So she was in a daze, but people were helping her. And then she runs into this house. Well, she runs across this house. Um, and we see her fall again and this woman inside the house come out the house and try to get her up like hey get up come on come into the house come into the house it's safe in here and Mallory gets up slowly the woman goes over to help her and in the midst of this the woman sees something it in the sky and she goes into that day and for some reason she started calling out to her mom like mom mom or whatever and she gets into a burning car and does commit suicide right there um but in this moment a man comes and finds Mallory on the ground because she's pregnant a lot of people are trying to help her because she keeps falling and she's big as a house because she's pregnant so this guy named Tom picks her up and they run to the house now when the woman left out the house to help Mallory, the house already had a couple people in it, including her husband. And her husband was upset because he was trying to prevent his wife from helping the lady. But since she did, she was like, she's pregnant. I got to help her. Since she helped the pregnant woman, she saw it and he just lost his wife. So now he's angry about this and he doesn't want to let anybody else inside the house. So he shuts the door, locks the door. And now we have the, the Mallory and a man who we find out his name is Tom. He tries to get into the house. So then we get a woman, another woman. So now there's three people, Tom, Mallory, and this woman named Lucy. They all are trying to get into the house. The old guy, his name is Douglas. He doesn't want to let them inside. He wants to keep the house how it is at this moment. Lucy is a cop, we find out. And she says, it's the police, open up, which I find is kind of funny because so what of you, the police? Eventually, the homeowner, who is also inside the house, says, okay, this is my house. Doug, get out the way. I'm letting him in. And he lets, he decides to let the three people in, Tom, Mallory, and Lucy. So now I'm going to give a little bit of description of this house. So inside this house, there is a couple people. So first of all, I want to tell you who the people on the outside who just got in are. We have Mallory, who's pregnant, the main character, Sandra Bullock. Her character is like a loner character, and she's a painter. Then we have Tom, who he's a black guy. He becomes the leader of the group, the leader of, of the house. Now that he's in it, he's like the leader. He's an army veteran. He was working and a lot of his workers or people he was working with started committing suicide. That's how he knows what was going on. And then we have Lucy, who is a cop. She's like a young girl. She's very cocky and saying that she's a cop. She will tell you that in a second, but she's not really a cop. She's inside the academy. So those three just got into the house. Now inside the house, we already have Douglas. Douglas is this old white guy. He's like a cranky guy. He's really old and he's really cranky. He's really mean. He's really sarcastic, very, he's like an asshole. But he also, his wife is inside the house, Lydia. Lydia is the woman who tried to help Mallory when she fell initially and ended up killing herself. So Lydia was inside the house, but now she's not anymore because she just committed suicide. We also have Greg, who is the actual home owner. Douglas and Lydia live around from Greg, so they're neighbors. But Greg, Greg is Asian. He's like, he's a smart guy. It's his house, and he's very, very, like, helpful. Also inside the house, we have Charlie, who is actually the guy from Get Out. He's like the main character's best friend from Get Out. And he pretty much played the same character that he played in Get Out. He was like a, a smart guy, but he was also a grocery store worker. So he was a grocery, he was a smart guy that worked in a grocery store. And he was also really, really funny. We also have inside the house Felix, who was played by Machine Gun Kelly. He was playing like a young guy, a young white guy with a whole bunch of tattoos. And was kind of like very urban. This comes back to when I was saying that Lucy's character is very, very cocky. Felix is inside the house going crazy, doing drugs, or popping pills. And Lucy says, you know I'm a cop, right? And like, to intimidate him to stop. 
And it's like, well, you're the cop, but the world is ending. So why do you keep throwing that out? There's nothing that you can do. What are you going to do, lock him up? <laughs> but anyway, he says, like, and then that's when we learn that she's not really a cop. She's, like, in the academy. So they said they call that out. Also inside the house, we have a few minor roles. There's this woman, this old white woman named Cheryl, who's just very, very kind and friendly. She's really, really nice. Like, you, she had a minor role. She didn't really do much, but she was just, like, a talkative lady that was just, like, very, very kind. We also have a white couple that we, they didn't really have a name. It was a man and a woman. And as soon as the three got into the house, Lucy, Mallory, and Tom, the white couple got a call on their phone about their children. I guess their children were, like, basically running around still outside so the white couple ended up leaving the house to help their kids so they're immediately eliminated from this house now that they're inside the house mallory is on her phone keep trying to get in touch with her mom who she hasn't talked to in a while because as you remember in the beginning of the movie jessica was the one that was communicating between was keeping communication between her mom and her sister because they didn't talk. The remaining eight people inside the house started to talk about what it is and what it makes you do. And someone said, I forget who it was, it was one of the girls, either Lucy or Mallory said like, if you look at it, it makes you want to hurt yourself. Or maybe it was Cheryl that said it, it makes you want to hurt yourself. And Douglas was like, cause you know he's real blunt, he was like, no, it makes you kill yourself. So. Um, they discover that if you look at it, you commit suicide. So the TV is on, and it's basically reiterating what they just discovered, saying, you know, don't go on social media, don't go, don't go outside, stay in the house. We're trying to figure it out. And then they just lose signal on the TV, so now they don't have any TV. And the one uh, Mallory couldn't get in touch with her mom, and basically she lost phone signal too. So they're communicating with this little radio. They're trying to get. They keep throughout the movie trying to get in touch with someone through the radio. So at this point, I'm assuming a couple hours has passed, maybe a couple days, and they hear a knock on the door, and um, they go to the door. A lot of people are against letting anybody in, but Tom is the basically the leader of the house. He's basically talking to this person, communicating. He gives them this, the like guides on what to do to come inside the house, and basically the woman gets inside the house, they had their guns ready. They didn't know who it was or if they were on the other side and stuff like that. But it ended up being this woman named Olympia who was also pregnant. Um, she was due around the same time as Mallory. Um, she tried to get close with Mallory, but Mallory was kind of like pushing her off, like, you know, playing it off. Didn't really want to talk to Olympia because she's not really social. She's a loner. But, oh, and... You know, when I was saying that she was looking into giving up her baby, it was because she didn't really feel a connection with the baby. But Olympia is like the complete opposite. At this point, Greg starts to think like we're about to run out of food. Well, they all start to think we're about to run out of food. We can't stay in here forever. It's a lot of us. It's like nine at this point. And Greg decides uh, maybe we can see more than we think. I got some cameras upstairs because he's got cameras around his house. He's going to try to like look outside to figure out a way to get to the grocery store. And um, basically, they decide to lock him inside the room and tie him up just in case so he wouldn't kill himself, just in case it didn't work. But it didn't work, and he did end up killing himself. They get into the room, and by the time they get in the room, it was too late. He was looking at these cameras, and whatever it was, it, it's, you can see it through cameras, and he ended up killing himself. So at this point, Charlie decides to tell everybody about his grocery store job and how he's got the key, he locked it up, blah, blah, blah. Doug gets mad, so I'm like, you just not telling us this? And Mallory's like, well, at least he told us. Like, Doug just always was so blunt about everything. And I really didn't like his character at first, but then in the end, I ended up liking Doug. He was, like, one of my favorite characters, but we'll get to that. Um, so then Tom comes up with this brilliant idea to drive to the grocery store, get into the car. They're going to they're gonna paint as many windows as they can and cover up the rest with newspaper. Because they this guy had like an attached garage. His house was pretty big. It was nice. Tom's like, who wants to go? And out of the eight people left, everybody seemed all right with going except Felix and Charlie. They were the only two that were like, no, I don't want to go. Felix ended up staying, but they pretty much forced Charlie to go. Because it's his grocery store, he has the key, he knows his way around. And I agree with Charlie at this point. He's like, I'm pretty sure y'all know what a grocery store look like. I'm pretty sure y'all know how to get around. Y'all know what to get. I'm not going. But they pretty much forced him. They ended up driving. This is one of my favorite scenes. They 
they're inside the car driving to the grocery store looking at the GPS the GPS navigators inside the car now they keep getting these proximity or however you say that word alerts that they're about to go over bumps and stuff and it's because it's dead people all over the ground and they're running into cars and all that and it was just it was a funny scene Charlie ended up getting like freaked out oh everybody ended up going out of the eight people except Cheryl didn't go Felix didn't go and Olympia didn't go. Eventually they get to the grocery store and they got the blindfolds on. They end up getting inside. This was one of my favorite scenes. You gotta see. Look out for this scene. Seeing them drive this car, looking at a GPS. They can't see anything. And they drive to this grocery store and they end up getting inside. Everybody was super happy. They just start going everywhere to get stuff. Douglas goes straight to the alcohol. He's down in this alcohol, filling up his cart with alcohol. We got Lucy over here eating the chips, you know, hanging out. Friggin' Tom over here, who's the leader of the group, he's supposed to be the mature one, getting electronics. But I mean, I guess, if y'all gonna be in there for so long, you might want to get some entertainment. One other thing I forgot to mention is Felix and Lucy end up being love interests. Um, at one point, Lucy was doing yoga, stretching, and Felix was look, checking her out, and she was like, not a chance. And he was like, well, the world's ending, sweetie, so you never know. And then they ended up, you know, doing it inside of a closet, and... Mallory walked in on them and <laughs> she closed the door really quick and then she um she ended up talking to Tom. Tom and Mallory got really close um in a non-sexual way. They was just like talking getting close whereas Lucy and Felix were the opposite. They were just they were getting close close. While they were inside this grocery store and they were all shopping, they all had their grocery carts and they were like, "Well, remember we got a we only got the trunk. So make sure y'all, you know, we can't get everything, but get enough." I was thinking, why don't they just stay at the grocery store? The only thing that the grocery store don't have is, I guess technically it don't have a shower, but it has sinks. So it don't have an actual tub, and it don't have a bed to sleep on. That's it. But you have enough food in that grocery store to last you, and it's bigger. So I was thinking, why not go there? But then Douglas ended up calling a meeting, and he said exactly what I was thinking. He's like, let's just stay here. And Mallory was saying, well, we got other people at the house. That's why they couldn't stay, because they're at the house with us. And he's like, so what? Let's just stay here. We'll survive longer here. And Mallory's like, yeah, that's a good idea, but we're not assholes. So we're going back. I commend Mallory, but I also see where Doug was coming from. In the midst of this meeting, they hear some knocking on some type of door in the back. They go up to it, and we hear somebody saying, help me, help me, which is pretty much the same thing that happened with Olympia. When she was knocking, she was saying, help me, please let me in, please let me in, please let me in. Which is the same thing that was happening with Tom, Lucy, and Mallory. So this is happening again for a third time. And again, they're about to let this person in. But Doug's like, no, no, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, one other thing, key thing I forgot was Mallory picked up some birds. She took some birds from this grocery store. So she was carrying them with her. Charlie informed them that that noise was coming from a loading dock and there was a person. So they start to open the door just a little bit to talk a little bit more. And Charlie recognized the voice. It's Fish Fingers. He said he works with Fish Fingers. Fish Finger, or Fish Finger. Fish Finger works inside seafood. He's a little crazy. He's been to prison, but he was always nice to Charlie. So then the birds start going crazy as they open the door more and more. And Tom is giving the instructions to cover the eyes, all this stuff. And then the birds start going crazy. Mallory's like, something's not right, something's not right, something's not right. And then this guy starts to open the door. He's like, look at it, look at it. He's trying to get them to look at the light. He's on the other side trying to kill them. And they're trying to push the door up. But it's coming open even more and more and more. Doug told them not to open in the first place. He was completely against it. So now he's basically like, oh, I knew this was going to happen. The door gets open. The light, or whatever it is, it struck Charlie, unfortunately. And Charlie runs out, pushes Fish Finger, and Charlie commits suicide. I hated this part. It's like, dang, Charlie was like one of the best characters at this point. He ended up dying. They ended up losing the one person that did not want to go. He was against going. He never wanted to go. And y'all forced him and he ended up losing his life. That was so sad. So now we're down to seven people. So they ended up getting back home, looking down. 
First thing Cheryl asks is where is Charlie when they have to break the news to her. Something else I want to bring up right now. Get away from what's going on right now and go into the flashback scenes or the flash forward scenes because this whole thing is a flashback to what's really going on right now in the present. So what's going on is in the opening scene we see Mallory talking to two kids and telling them we're going on a journey. It's going to be very scary. Do not do this. Do not take off your blindfolds, whatever you do. And she's telling them to listen, please. They're going down river, and there's a little box with the birds, too. In the midst of this journey, the first flashback, we see a man yelling at them. She stops, she listens, and at this point, we don't really know anything about the movie. And then she just keeps going. She's like, nope, just keep going, keep going. And then the guy's like, you can open your eyes, you can open your eyes. So at this point, I'm thinking, I don't know what's going on. So I'm like, yeah, he seems cool. Like, my dumbs are like, yeah, go and take off your blindfold. Little do I know, as soon as he they encounter him, he's like trying to force the blindfolds off. He's trying to kill them. He's against them. So then she ends up killing him. She hits him in the head a couple times, kicks him in the head, and they, she keeps going down river. Another scene, we see her run into a ship because they can't see nothing. They're just going down river, and she runs into something that's in the middle of the river, and basically the boy. Oh, and she's calling these two little kids boy and girl. They don't have names. So the boy falls out of the ship or the little boat, canoe, whatever. And she, eventually she gets him out, but they lost their their blankets. They lost their food, stuff like that. And she was upset, but she wasn't upset with him. Another flashback, we see them land on some shore and she, she does some type of trick with some rope. She tells them to stay in the boat. She keeps informing them very strict, stay in the boat, do not leave this ship. Whatever you do, do not leave this ship. She goes into this house, she gets more more um, blankets, towels, more food. She can remove it when she gets inside. Um, she's using a string to get around and the girl ends up getting out the boat and she's like, oh, I think she needs help. And she just starts walking. I'm getting so mad at this girl. And then, boom, Mallory grabs the girl and runs back into the boat. So, didn't I tell you not to leave the boat? You never listen. And she's yelling, disciplining this girl. At this point in the flashback, I'm thinking, okay, so Mallory's, Mallory's pregnant. So, these are her kids. She had twins. That's what I'm thinking. Basically, what's going on now? Oh, actually, big thing that happens as soon as they get back home and this is the scene that I don't understand if y'all understand this please leave it in the comments or if you don't understand it too please leave that in the comments because I really want to know what happened here they get to the house and somehow Felix and Lucy end up going missing now what I thought happened when I watched this was that Felix and Lucy stole the car with all the food in it because they were being selfish and they left and they went somewhere else so that they can survive together more longer because they got all that food and there's only two people instead of eight or was it seven at this point but i guess that's not what happened um because then later on i like uh douglas said like every time we encounter the outside world people die look at felix and lucy so did felix and lucy die I, I'm, I was i was i am still confused i don't know what happened because it didn't seem like they lost the food because it never came up Tom and Mallory are getting really, really close. And then we see that Mallory's just still playing around with the radio, just trying to get a signal, trying to, you know, reach out to someone. And she hears, she overhears Olympia, Olympia at the door trying to basically talk to someone and get them inside the house. And by the time Mallory makes it to the door, Olympia's already let this person in. And it's this guy, his name is Gary. Gary is this guy, he ha he sounds like he has a little bit of an accent. He looks very sketchy and creepy. Uh, the rest of the people come over and they're just like, oh my God, you just let someone in, what happened? Like, you know, like you could have talked to us about this. Um, Tom's like accepting him. He told some story about what happened and uh, Gary did. Gary told some story about what happened and what's going on and basically trying to get their trust. I thought that Gary was a little bit suspicious. For some reason, it was something about him. I immediately trust Olympia. Didn't think it was anything wrong with her, but Gary was just sketchy to me from the, from the get and I just didn't trust him. Um, and so did Douglas. Douglas was like, no, I'm sorry. After hearing his story, he put his gun up. He was like, yeah, I'm sorry. All that crap you just said, but you got to go. As simple as that. And the rest of the people were just like, no. And then Cheryl ended up hitting Douglas over the head. I thought she killed him. 
because she hit him over the head and he fell out. But apparently she just KO'd him. He was knocked out. They put him in the garage and they locked him in the garage. Like, what the heck is wrong with y'all? But anyway, so Gary's around and, you know, they're living life normal for a while. Uh, Douglas is locked in the garage. Olympia's water breaks. So Olympia's about to have the baby. They go upstairs. And Mallory's getting water for the pregnancy because Cheryl's delivering the baby. Mallory goes downstairs to get water. In the midst of this, her water breaks. So now she's having the baby. Olympia has a girl and Mallory has a boy. So then at this point, I'm like, oh, so those are the two kids. So the boy is Mallory's from the flash forward. So the boy is actually Mallory's. The girl is not hers, but she's taking care of it. Because also inside of a scene, we've seen Mallory and... Olympia actually do bond this time and Mallory gives Olympia a gift that she got from Walmart or from the grocery store as a baby shower gift and Olympia makes Mallory promise that if anything happens to her she will take care of her baby and Mallory does it so in the midst of this baby having upstairs downstairs we see Gary going pretty much crazy putting some pictures together I didn't quite understand what he was doing then he starts to open up all the windows and Douglas is yelling like what we let you in what's going on and then we see him kind of we see Gary kind of disappear we see Tom see the pictures he's looking for Gary 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 Douglas says he op oh and Gary takes the birds and put them in the freezer Douglas is yelling at Tom this is what happened I told y'all not to do this he's yelling through the glass why Tom didn't let Douglas out is beyond me he should have let Douglas out but he didn't he kept trying to look for Gary and then Gary knocks out Tom and at this point I'm thinking Tom died so then he goes over to Douglas Douglas is yelling at him like we let you in we helped you out what are you doing and Gary opens the garage so that, you know, Douglas is exposed to the light and Douglas is trying to cover up his eyes and at this point I'm thinking Douglas died. So now I'm thinking Tom and Douglas have both died. Gary goes upstairs, the babies are born, so it's Cheryl, Olympia, the two babies, and Mallory. He goes up there, he's acting creepy, he's like, yeah, babies are so cute. Look at this. And he opens the blinds so to expose the light. As soon as he opens it, unfortunately, Olympia sees the light or whatever it is that they're looking at. And she immediately commits suicide. Like, um, Mallory takes the baby, gets the baby from Olympia. And Olympia just jumps out the window and kills herself. Poor Cheryl was just, and she's been the sweet old lady this whole movie. And she was just really fighting from seeing whatever it is. And then we see the infamous scene, that I'm, the meme that I'm pretty sure everybody's already seen, where Gary opens, forces, force opens Cheryl's eyes and Cheryl sees whatever it is. She had scissors, she was covering her eyes and she had scissors intending to kill Gary. But once he forced her eyes open, she ended up killing herself with scissors. So now Cheryl's dead. So I'm thinking everybody's dead except Mallory at this point. So now Gary, for turns his attention to Mallory and the kids. He wants to kill the kids first, then Mallory, or force them to see whatever it is. But we see Douglas, and I went crazy when I saw this. I'm like, yes, Douglas! As much as I didn't like him all this movie, he is about to be the savior. He is the little, the toys from Toy Story that always saves people. Like, he knew he was the one that knew everything. So they start to fight. Well, actually, no, Douglas had his eyes closed. Because, obviously, the lights are open. The windows are open. So he has this gun. He's trying to kill Gary. But Gary's moving and talking. And since Gary can't see, or since Douglas can't see, he's not shooting. But I think he should have just shot. Personally, I do. Basically, they ended up fighting. They ended up rolling all the way to the downstairs. And, unfortunately, Gary killed Douglas. Uh, this part, he took the sword and he stabbed him right in the chest. I was so... Have all the deaths, all of them got to me a little bit, uh, but Douglas, like, he was just, he was so cranky and so mean, but he was really trying to help, and he was really doing the right thing, so that really, really, I was really upset when he passed. So now it's Tom, who I thought was dead, but they both are fighting for the gun on the ground, the shotgun, and Tom ends up killing Gary, and now Tom is, goes to comfort the two kids, boy and girl, and Mallory. Now we're at five years later, which is pretty much the present, um, just before Mallory and the kids go on this journey. So I figure like everyone died except her and the two kids. 
Um, but Tom was still around, so at this point I'm like, how does he die, or does he just go separate, or what happened with this? But, um, I do want to mention that there was a flashback scene before, in the midst of the movie, where Mallory's told the kids that we're about to go to the Rapids, uh, and it's going to be very scary, it's going to be the scariest thing we've ever done, and one of y'all are going to have to look. The boy says, I'll do it. And Mallory's like, no, I pick. And she's basically alluding to the fact that she wants the girl to look. And I thought it was because Mallory doesn't really love the girl because the girl's not really her daughter. So if she loses the girl, she don't really care as much as she loses the boy. So five years later, the kids are five. And we just see, at this point, it's just like normal stuff, how they're living. Um, uh, Mallory's going around with this string when she has to go outside to get food or towels or whatever, blankets. And they're just living life inside random houses. They go from house to house to house um, so that they can get more stuff or whatever. Eventually, she she sees that there's cars driving around. And she tells Tom, like, there's cars driving around. Like, they're not blindfolded. And Tom says, all right, no more runs by yourself. Tom is, like, reading to these kids. Mallory's kind of mean to the kids. She Well, not mean, but she's just trying to be more, like, honest with them. Cause Tom's all like uh, telling them these stories and Mallory's like this will never come true because of our lives so no need to give them these um, hopes so she cut off some story that Tom was telling the two kids and she told them to go to bed and the boy got up but the girl just kept sitting there and was just disobeying Mallory Mallory was trying to get her to come but the girl just sat there and looked at Mallory like she was crazy. So the girl and Mallory don't really have the best relationship. Mallory came up with these little bell things for the kids so that if they're in danger, they can read these, ring these bells. So eventually they do get um, some signal from the radio and they talk to some guy named Rick who gives them some instructions on how to go downriver and informs them about the rapids and all this stuff. Mallory does not believe Rick, but um, Tom does. Tom says if he knows about the birds, he knows this, this, that. And Mallory's like, well, everybody did, and look what happened. So I'm, I'm kind of on, on the fence. I'm kind of on both their sides. Um, but then they start hearing knock at the door, so there's this people that's on the other side that's about to attack them. Tom sends um, Mallory and boy and girl out and tells them to go do what what Rick said. Mallory was at first hesitant saying she didn't want to leave Tom but Tom basically forced her to go so she left with the kids and they went on the river. Um, Tom ended up going outside to fight with, distract the people and fight with them and try to kill them and at some point it was so many of them he just was like forget it. He took his blindfold off he started killing them. He killed them all and then he he couldn't help but look at whatever it is, and he ended up killing himself. So we go to the Rapids part. Um, they make it past the Rapids, but they lose the um, the boat. Um, oh, at one point, um, so they kept talking about um, who's going to look. Boy keeps on volunteering, but she keeps saying no and keeps looking at the girl, and the girl's just looking sad and, you know, defeated. And then she, eventually she's like, I'll do it. Because she knew that Mallory wanted her to. But then... Mallory said, you know what, none of us is going to look. Because she started thinking about what was going on, what she'd been through. And she basically embraced being a mom. like she, Because she didn't want to want to be a mom in the beginning of this. But she, I guess she fell in love with these kids and she didn't want anybody to look. So they ended up getting there. Um, there was a big scene where you thought that they were going to lose the girl. Because she almost took her um, her blindfold off. But and she found, because Mallory fell and she lost both kids. So then, whatever it is, was telling the kids to remove their blindfolds, and Mallory's yelling at them like, no, don't, 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 don't. So then she finds the boy, and she's still looking for the girl, she's screaming, and the boy's like, she doesn't really like you. Like, she, she doesn't like you, you make her mad or whatever. So then she's, um, Mallory starts apologizing to the girl, saying, I shouldn't have did this, I shouldn't have did that, I shouldn't have to interrupted Tom's story, and this is how the story ends. And eventually the girl finds them, and they actually do make it to this place, the place that Rick was telling them about on the radio. And it's a home for the blind. All this time I never thought about people being blind that would not... You know, so this place, the whatever it is, would not go there because it's a home for the blind. So at this place, boy and girl play with the other kids, and Mallory talks to the doctor, and she gives them a name. She names the boy Tom, and she names the girl Olympia after her parent, after her mom. 
kind of surprising she didn't name her after Jessica, her sister. But because she said you're being named after the most sweet girl ever, like, wouldn't you think that about your sister? Olympia, like, but whatever it is. Because she only knew Olympia for, like, a month at the most. At the most, a month. I don't even know if it was that long. It might even been a week. But... But that is her real mom. And she told the boy that I'm your mom. Like, she embraced being a mom. And then that's how it ended. Personally, I think this was a five-star movie. I liked everything about it. There's nothing I really didn't like. I just wish they would have explained what it is that they were looking at more and why was it there. But, I mean, I guess it can be left to the imagination. And also, did it go away? Because I thought that the movie would end with all of this going away. Like, it took me a while into the movie to figure out that it was a flashback of a flash forward, even though it kept saying on the screen five years ago. <laughs> but, um, and then it would say, like, 24 hours on the river, 48 hours on the river, or 50, whatever, however, however long it was. But, yeah, I loved the movie so much. Um, it's over two hours long, and it kept my attention for every bit of it. I wasn't bored at all. Um, it really picked up in the first 15 minutes. So, if you're not hooked by the 15 minutes... Yeah, you probably it's probably not a movie for you, but um, yeah, I give it two thumbs up and five stars. So I'll just definitely say go check it out on Netflix. Um, until next time, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Catch you later.